Hey, everybody. Welcome back to My Daily Bread, episode 35. So excited to be here today with you. Uh, we have some great content planned for 2024. And ahead of that, we wanted to go ahead and just have this session together. Excited to be with my brothers today, Justin and Ben Williams. This is awesome. Yeah. We finally got you here. Yeah. I know. I know. It's time. <laughs> How you feeling about that, bud? It feels good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> does it feel like what you're supposed to be doing? It feels like the right time. It does, huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's sure. good. That's awesome. We have to bring that back. The right time. The right the time. The right time. Yeah. What's that mean? The right place, too. Yeah. All that matters. Yeah. Absolutely. We're uh we're here in Lyft Studios again and uh trying to make the most of our time together, right? Yes. Before uh before I head out again uh, Sadly. back to the West. Yes. Uh, but hey, this is what we do. The Lord has us uh, mobile this year, and I think it's pretty awesome. <sighs> it, you have to be so careful when you say to the Lord, hear my sin me, uh, because he will, mm. and uh, because he has a plan. He has a great big plan, and we can be a part of it, or we can decide not to be. We can hold on to a lot of stuff. Yeah. I don't want to hold on. No. No, that's a darkness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a darkness in my life. It is. No, there's also chapters that you have to hold on. Okay. So. What do you guys want to talk about today? Where are we going? Well, I think I would love for you to give some clarity about a little bit of kind of what happened on Saturday night. Wow. For My Daily Bread, we can share Man. a little bit of what you're praying about, what we've been praying about. We had an amazing leadership meeting yeah. last week. So, um, And then all the calls since January have just been an absolute blessing. Just amazing. Challenges. And then I want to hear a little bit of, you know, the statement Benny said, right time. Yeah, I and do What too. does that mean for him? And if he's willing to share a little bit of all that the Lord has called him to, I think there's some people who need to hear that. And um, what you're doing. And what you're doing. Yeah. A lot of people don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you just kind of live true. really behind the scenes, and but amazing things and awesome things are happening in your life. Oh, yeah, constant. Yeah. Yeah. So let's dive in. Uh, so it's so amazing how My Daily Bread started, where we were then and where we are now and where we're headed. And, you know, we do, we, you and I, there's a podcast coming out tomorrow that we recorded at the end of 2023 right. uh, that talks a little bit about this, but the fullness of the conversation we didn't have. No, not yet. But in 2024, we have now uh, moved from where we started being just a, a morning call. We started as one call around the, the nation that ended up being global uh, of reading scripture together, gathering in the mornings. We're reading four chapters of scripture today, uh, a day, and that has turned into something that is just beyond what I ever thought it would be. And, and you've heard me say this before. I thought that in... In about 30 days from the start of that, people would have fizzled out because human nature is to start but not finish. Oh, for sure. But that hasn't happened. What no. started with about 15 to 18 people grew into 30, 50, 70, 100 quickly. And now My Daily Bread Global has over 1,000 members worldwide. Wow. That's amazing. That blows my mind. It's crazy. There are churches that, that struggle to survive with 10 and 20 people and yet all of a sudden the lord opened up this digital platform for us and uh we are seeing the gospel be declared around the world every day mm -hmm. and every we day. love it every day and so multiple times a day yeah multiple too. times yeah. a day yeah and because it's even in the evenings i'm i'm amazed that that many people at a different crowd at that come together to press in and to lean into the word of God. And it's it just incredible. shows us that we have a world that is hungry for the presence of Jesus. And my daily bread exists to unite believers together around his word and his presence. That's right. And to encourage one another in the presence of the Lord that you have a voice. Yes. That Holy Spirit speaks to you just like he does your pastors, your Bible teachers, your church leaders, they are not the only ones hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is speaking to all believers, yes, and is. we're learning together to hear his voice and to cultivate a sensitivity 
to hearing his voice. And I love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's been an absolute dream to witness all that the Lord has done in the last year. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people are probably like, man, have you guys done strategy meetings and this and that? And <laughs> no, I mean, like, no. just do we, are we going to do a little bit more of that? Maybe, but um, no, I, I love what Penny said the other day. It's like a wildfire fire or a controlled fire mm-hmm. that the Lord is doing. And it has been your job and those who you even trust to speak life into the ministry that we don't forget that. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to create something to sell. Yeah. It's not for sell. No. Uh, I'm not trying to create a status where we get invited to conferences. Mm-mm. I could kill us about oh, that. Oh, I know. Yeah. So um, seeing what the Lord is doing, we had one of our first official hub nights on Saturday. Amazing night. And that's what's that's where we're moving into in addition to, not instead of, nope. in addition to right. our morning calls, our evening calls, we're moving into these That's right. new formats, this new thing that God is doing with My Daily Bread Global. And we don't know what the fullness of it looks like, but we're just following His voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to participate in it, and it was, um, oh, it was one, the presence of the Lord is there fully. Mm-hmm. And you feel that. And I'm not trying to be like, uber spiritual i'm just i'm giving you my perspective from the moment Uh that i had um it's raw it's real you have to be vulnerable with people in the room because it's just somebody's living room or somebody's business and um man i bet there'll be some hub nights when we're in a crowd of people who have no idea why we're meeting in a particular place and you have to still be confident in who the lord is and that's my heart as yeah. we develop right now in our homes, and I think that's right. But you know, my my aspect is I pray there's a hub night at Parlor Donuts while business is open, not when it's closed. Mm-hmm. You know, and what does that look like? And the people of God coming and being disciples, you know, visually outside yeah. of the walls of the church, but also still being tied to the church because that's a big aspect, you know. And so it was amazing. Um, we did it here in Venice, Florida. I know you got another one coming up, and. There's going to be some information that people can see when the next hub night is. Through Absolutely, so, so through are, our website and yes. through our mobile app. Now the uh, the page is live. We have our hub groups uh, that's live on the website. If you uh, want more information on a hub group or you want to help us get them scheduled in your community yes. where you are, doesn't matter where you are. If you're in Uganda, if you're in Kenya, if you're in New York or Tennessee or Indiana or any other places that gather together, California. We yes. want to come and help establish uh, a hub group, uh, a moment where we gather together as believers and just lean in and press into the presence of Jesus and see where He leads us. That's right, right. It's not we're not starting um, we're not starting like a, a, a separate thing. This is just this is taking our digital experience. And from time to time, being together in the same room right. and experiencing that. It was amazing what happened Saturday night. We prayed for one another. Yes, we did. We cracked open the Word of God together and focused in on a passage of Scripture where the Lord taught us principles yes, he did. for moving with Him in the next year. And we want more of that. Sometimes it will be coffee together. Oh, for sure. And and reading the word of God together. Sometimes it will be a game night. Yes. The whole idea behind hub groups is uniting together as believers in the presence of Jesus. In fact, Penny came up with a great acronym. I really like it, and I think we're going to use it. He's uniting believers. A hub. Mm. He's uniting believers. We're not... Uh, the days of kind of being walled off from one another as believers, those days are over. over. Mm. The presence of Jesus exists uh, to unite us. Purely. How good and how present, how good and how pleasant it is, brothers, uh, for brothers to dwell together in unity, for there the yes. Lord commands a blessing. There he is. Life forevermore. Doing life together with you guys, I, why do I come back to, to uh, Venice, Florida once a month? Because life is happening here, and I want to be a part of any life thing that God is doing. As he's breathing into it, as he's opening up the doors, I, I'm all in with God. It might be part of my you know, extrovert personality, yeah. but at the same time, Jesus is here. Mm-hmm. Amen. I want to be a part of what Jesus, Jesus is, is doing. Here. He's doing something. I'll tell you, as a leader, um, 
Saturday night, the hub thing for me. So if you're a leader of any sorts, um, I mean, I'm talking about local church, nonprofit, business owner. It was so refreshing to sit with people, mm -hmm. just to sit in the presence of the Lord with his people. Uh, my title didn't matter. I was there to seek yeah. what the Father had. And um, I didn't have to present. I didn't have to put on. Um, I didn't have to. I served in a way that was the same way that everyone else was serving, mm -hmm. asking the Lord mm -hmm. what he had for his people. And so when there was moments to pray, moments to teach, the Lord did guide the whole moment. And so if you feel led to that, email us for sure. I think this is something the Lord wants to do this year. I know Ron will be traveling a little bit to one next one, and then we'll have another one in Florida. But you know, I think we're we're ready to see what the Lord wants to do with yeah. the hubs and yeah. get them on the calendars. You know, I want to talk about the importance of that because uh, I've had conversations with a couple people about uh, getting outside of the church building. Like, whenever you're coming to church, it's so fast and so quick that like your transactions with people are so fast and so quick. That's right. There's no time to be vulnerable or really talk about what you have going on in your life and so and connect um, and connect with people truly connect with people because mm -hmm. you know your transaction is so quick um but whenever you have a hub like that changes the ball game you're in the room you're in the room you can be vulnerable you can talk to people you can connect with people mm -hmm. understand what they really got going on in their life and uh i think there is a ton of of churchgoers that are looking for something like that i think they are too yeah. And uh, there's something valuable about uh, the Lee used to say, skin is in, right? Mm. And he, he was stressing the point of don't neglect gathering together in person. The church, we need the church. We need to come together as the church, the church experience, the worship, the corporate worship experience, the corporate word experience, absolutely necessary. And hubs aren't instead of. They're a supplement to those things. Absolutely. And when we are in the room together, I can fully see you yeah. and compassion grows yeah. and mercy grows. I think it's easy to not be merciful when you aren't being touched with people. Oh, mm -hmm. I think it's easy sure. to not have grace for someone's life when all you know, you know stuff, but you don't see stuff. And mm -hmm. I have said this for a while and I, I believe this with all of my heart. We are moving into a time where Jesus wants us to see, not just hear. He needs mm. you to see. Yes. Like and I'm he's healing you, my vision yes, from he, it. Yes, me too. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, you know, what you just said and what you said, Ben, is, you know, those don't know, but I ran a marathon. You did. Tell it. Yeah, I'm going to tell. Is that okay? So I got hit hard last week. Just every day the Lord was just hammering me in a way for some clarity to to get some things figured out in the new year mm -hmm. i thought i'd have all year right and he's like no you got seven days so <laughs> but i ran the disney marathon man it was so fun um one of the greatest physical experiences of my life but um there was this moment my knee just locked up my hip was done so it's like mile 21 or something too and i have you know another six mm. you know and so I was worried, worried I wasn't going to finish, started doubting myself, and I said a little prayer, and the Lord was like, hey, it's all going to be good, man. It was just such a good experience, wasn't it? And the joy of the Lord came back in my heart because the whole rest of the day, I just had so much joy. I didn't use any aggression to get. I just was so happy. And Disney, no matter how people feel about it, I know it's controversial, and it's part of the world, but it does bring me joy. Like, I love going there and seeing. It just makes me feel like um, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with all this stuff that goes on, but as a creative, it re refuels this dreamlike thing in me. And so running, it was just great to do that. And all of a sudden the Lord just was like, hey, just be present. Open your eyes. Like the rest of the run or however long it lasts, if they tell you you're not going to finish, you got to get on the bus, so what? Just be present. And so I was able to see so many different people. And I started talking to the people around me and the stories that came from just being present and seeing his people motivated me to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And one thing I realized is everyone in that race, which I think it was 15,000 people, all had the same goal. The goal was to get to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And we all were different people. We were male. We were you know, female. We were black, white, Hispanic. Everybody was different. We were, some of us, you know, um, was disabled. Some people were being pushed by their parents and 
Mm. So it's just a majority of different people, but with the same goal. And as I finished, I was like, shouldn't that what the kingdom of God should be? We all have a goal, right? We all want to see Jesus one day. Mm. And um, it really opened my eyes to start seeing people and being okay to be vulnerable again and being okay with maybe getting hurt. It's guaranteed. If you're in relationship with people, being hurt is guaranteed. And um, I want to encourage people as you dive into this year, if you ever come to one of our hubs, yeah, and you don't know about it, nobody, it's okay. Come mm-hmm. on, man. I promise you. I'm not sitting here to tell you all are welcomed and give you this whole spill. I'm just saying it's okay to be uncomfortable. Yeah. You know? Because there right. are some people, uh, and hubs are open, there are people who don't want to go to a church building yes. based off of a church hurt, an experience, based off of unknown things, for whatever reason it is. So we want them to feel comfortable gathering with believers. Yes. And if that means that eventually they the church becomes something that they're willing to participate in and be a part of, that's awesome. Amazing. It's loving them where they are. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's inviting them to experience Jesus in an untraditional manner. And yes. that's why we want hubs to keep growing and, and going where they're headed. It's John yeah. 14. Okay. Right. So this is really what I felt it was, and you we read this mm-hmm. the other day, and it just hit ho- it hit home for me, and I was pretty we I think we read it that night, in our hub live, didn't we? I think we did. John fourteen, we did. Uh huh. Um, well, if you go down to the end, um, was it John thirteen? Was it thirteen or fourteen? Yeah, thirteen was. Uh, was that Saturday? Yeah, that was Saturday. So it's John thirteen. Um, When Jesus says the new command. Yeah. And there's something, like, I'll read it real quick. When he had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If if God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. I love this whole saying. It's like Mm -hmm. him saying, I am God. Yeah. But the Son of Man now will be glorified Uh because I'm about to go do what I've been called to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Little children, I love this. Little children, I am with you a little while longer. He's little children, he's talking to his disciples. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's talking to you and me. Don't get uh-huh. it twisted. And that's a great place when the Lord calls the child because children aren't bombarded with nonsense. By the way, I was thinking this the other day, the reason why my daughter experiences the presence of the Lord right now in such an authentic way is she is so used to having somebody take care of her all the time so she doesn't have pride. That's good. She has no pride. That's really So when good. she comes into the Father, she's full. Mm-hmm. Oh, he'll realize, I, I, yeah, this is normal. I have nothing to hide from him. Mm-hmm. Um, he is everything to me, and he will be my provider. So she, that's why I, I think when he calls little children. But uh, he says, I give you a new command, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to, to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple. I think right now in the culture of today, we have got to start living this out. What is profound about this new commandment is he told them this within hours later being arrested and yeah. persecuted to death. And knowing that I need you as my disciples to love the people that literally put me on the cross, that one day you will proclaim the good news to them. I still can't. This is why he says it's a new command. Mm -hmm. I need you to love everyone and the people that you want to kill who killed me, which is their own people. And then it gets even crazier as they expand the church. You know, Paul calls one of them out, doesn't he? He's like, hey, you got to love these Gentiles. Yeah. He Not does. just preach to them. Mm-hmm. Don't forget what the commandment is. It's to love, mm-hmm. meaning you have to be together with them. Don't go sit over there mm-hmm. when you're done preaching. That's real. Don't separate yourself after you're done leading worship and go to your green room. Mm. Mm-hmm. Don't hide in the back. Mm-hmm. Don't stay in your office all day. I'm just saying. You're saying right. We have got to follow the full gospel. Mm-hmm. And part of the full gospel of Jesus Christ is to love everyone. And what I'm learning more and more, to truly love somebody, I must be available and I must, I must give access. I have to give access. I'm not saying not to have boundaries. No, no, no. Boundaryless is not what the Lord is saying here. Um, and I don't know if I, I... No, I do know. We can't fully love without the Holy Spirit. So it comes into that, that constant relationship with the helper. Mm-hmm. I pray every day recently, Lord, help me love people. Help me love people. Help me be okay to be vulnerable. Help me be okay with being transparent. Help me be okay with being hurt. And then when I be when I am hurt, heal me as quickly as possible. Because mm-hmm. I want to be back in. I want to be back in with your people. And that's all I think this is the season. This is why hubs will be 
so powerful for my daily bread is I think people so are getting equipped through the word. And now it's, it's like, you know, the training happens and Jesus goes, hey, by the way, here we go. You ready? Let's go. Because my heart is, as hubs happen, we have you in a hub one day, you're there for six months and you come to us or the person who leads the hub or whatever. And you're like, hey, I'm going to start a hub at my blank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just the multiplication of God's people yeah. coming together, the full gospel. Um, and then spreading that throughout our lives and our families will change the world. Yes, it will. It will change the world. So that's awesome. what brings me into, and that's what I experienced on Saturday. I experienced people that I've done life with, quotation marks. I actually did life with them on Saturday. That's right. And I can say this as a pastor at Lift Church. There's some people in there that I haven't connected with, um, that I connected with on an intimate level mm-hmm. that will be lasting forever. And yeah, you're probably like, man, are you really saying that? Yeah, I'm saying that. It's amazing. A lot of those people went to my church, and I haven't connected with them on that level. Mm. And it gave the opportunity for you to connect. It, it did, but I came in as a somebody just the same. Yeah. Just the same, ready to experience the presence of the Lord. I love it. It's freeing. Yeah. You don't have to be Pastor Justin. Mm. I don't have to be Pastor Ron. I'm just Ron. You're just Justin. That's it. Who loves Jesus. Who loves Jesus. And going after him with everything in our heart. That's it. Yeah. And that fire will jump on to your neighbor. When you're on fire for Jesus, I think this. I think we miss this sometimes. When you're on fire for Jesus, that fire, uh, Jesus even talks about this in a parable. Who lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel? Oh, yeah. Who does that? Why do we do that with the thing that God is doing inside of our life? Yeah. And what happens when you snuff out a flame? right? You cover that flame up and it snuffs out. It smolders and all you get is smoke from it. And the Holy Spirit is reminding us what Jesus said in Luke chapter 12. Here we go. He said in chapter 12, I have come to bring a fire upon the earth and oh, how I wish it were already consumed. Wow. The fire inside of you and the fire inside of me is not meant to be kept to ourselves. It's meant to to ignite the fire in someone else. Amen. Anytime you put a match that's not lit next to a match that l- that's lit, True. it catches on fire. You don't even have to touch it. It's just got to be near. Amen Proximity is to close that. to it. Yes. And it will it will just burst in flame, right? True. The same thing with our lives for believers. When we gather together in communities of faith, and, and allow Jesus to minister and for the presence of Holy Spirit to come in into the moment, all of a sudden that fire inside of me goes to you and that fire inside of you goes to your neighbor. And before long, we're a bright shining light, not with our light, no. but with the light of Jesus. The bride, mm-hmm. the ready bride. to experience mm-hmm. the husband, yes. Jesus Christ. And if we, we're we going to carry coming. out the word of God by becoming that fire that's igniting the world, and before before long... This great awakening that's happening, we're we're gonna see the fruit of it. It's gonna be amazing. I think it's the happening. fruit of it will be the second coming of Messiah. I do too. I do too. Because his bride will be ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On fire. Mm-hmm. Don't get it wrong. John the Baptist proclaimed this. Yeah, he did. That I brought to baptize you in water. But one coming greater than I will baptize you with fire. Fire. Wow. <laughs> John knew. <laughs> lit John up, man. Knew. We're <laughs> lit up. Just keep it going. Uh-huh. What do you think about that, Benny boy? And a little bit of that. I think that goes really well with where the Lord has had you. Yeah. I think your flame is mm-hmm. lit up. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. When he was saying that, the thing that came to my mind was, um, he's the only fire that can't be burnt out. Mm-hmm. I never did That's that. good. Yeah. Yes, sir. So if you're in your life and you're trying to get motivation from this, you're trying to get motivation from that. Maybe you can do it for six months. Maybe mm-hmm. you can do it for one month, depending on what the motivation is, right? Mm-hmm. But then when you have the fire coming from Jesus, you can do it for eternity. Yes, you can. It can never be burnt out. So I think that's where I am I am at. I think that I've had times where uh, I had motivation for this. This is the reason, right? This was where the motivation came from, or this is where the motiva- motivation came from. And now... My motivation is coming from, um, I'm just uh, like you guys. I just want to follow Jesus and point people towards him. Yeah. And I don't care about um, anything else. Yeah. I don't care about A or B or whatever it is. You know, For me, it's just 
uh, I'm going to do what I feel like he has called me to do or what he's telling me to do in a certain season. And that's where the fire, that's where the passion comes from in that moment is from that. Amen. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's what I would say uh, is going on with me, you know. I told Jay, I was like, you know, there is that woke culture, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, I am awake. So it's opposite of woke culture. It is I'm awake, meaning like I was asleep before, but now I understand. <laughs> All right. <Arise>. Yeah. <laughs> Joshua 3. Right. Mm, Joshua 3. Time to arise. Yeah. Start. Time to start. Yeah. You cannot be complacent and start at the same time. Mm. But to get rid of complacency, you have to start. Yeah. Complacency will eat you alive yes, it if will. you're out mm -hmm. of line with the Lord. Mm -hmm. It will. Not saying he causes it. I'm just letting you no. know. No. When you're out of alignment with what he wants you to do. We're invited we to are. partner with him. We are. And when we are partnered with him, when he moves, we move. Yes. When he goes, we go. When he says, we say. Yes. Yeah. That is the cost. Yes, it is. Of being a disciple. Mm -hmm. Don't forget Luke 14. Yeah. Luke 14. This is this has been this is my thing right now. It's not fun. So everyone's like, oh, don't you love when the Lord speaks? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is where he's calling his people. Um, I want to read it to everyone because it's just it's the gift. It's the cost of following Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard a lot of things about grace recently in the in the in church world and the Christianity in America. And I've been able to watch some podcasts and tech, you know, the global of where we're at right now. It's a beauty. Tech is a tool. Mm -hmm. Yes, it brings a lot of issues, but it's a, an amazing tool in the time period that we're living. Sure. How do you use the tool? That mm -hmm. would be my encouragement to people. And if it controls you, we'll get that fixed so you can use it as a resource and not an addiction. Mm -hmm. That's my rant for a minute. But he says, now great crowds were traveling with him. So he turned and said this to them. I love with the great crowds. I feel like he, it's almost like he means he's annoyed. Like you're just following me. Everybody's all over me. You know what I mean? That's what I think about. <laughs> he is. He's like, because he has to. They I, were inquisitive. Well, I view this like whole dramatic yeah. thing where he's just like in his head, like they don't even get it. Like they want to follow me. You want to follow me? Okay, here you go. This is what I think he feels like. You want to follow me? All y'all with me? You know he's hearing like, Jesus, you're amazing. You are so great. Yeah. And he's just probably annoyed. You ever think he rolled his eyes? Oh, for yeah. sure. And he looks at these people like, I know what you're going to do. Yeah. For sure. You know as a leader when people are like, I'm for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Though. I do. Though. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And then he goes, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, in the Greek, this means more than. Mm -hmm. People like degrade the statement from him because like, this is a contradictory. You can't hate. Greek means more than. His own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. This, can't, this is Jesus saying cannot. He doesn't say that a lot. Then he goes on again. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. For which of you wanting to build a tower doesn't first sit down and calculate the cost to see if it has enough to complete? Meaning who in here doesn't prepare for what you're about to do? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, after he has laid his foundation, cannot finish it. All the onlookers will begin to ridicule him saying this man started to build and wasn't able to finish. Mm -hmm. he, he uses another analogy about a war. Um, in the next couple. But then he says, in the same way, therefore, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be not my disciple. Mm. He said it how many times so far? Three. Now salt is good, but if salt should lose its taste, how will it be made salty? It isn't fit for the soil or for the manure pile. Mm. He brings soil and manure in the same sentence. Yeah. Then he goes, they throw it out. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen. As you were just talking about the fire. Yeah. He gives us, when I'm reading this, he gives you structure of how to keep your fire going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he also gives you a realization just to know, hey, if you don't do this, this is the cost. And if you don't, I, I, I mean, you just can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that this might not be talking about, the, the. I don't know, I'm struggling with the salvation and stuff in it. I'm not saying that. Just what is a disciple? 
is what I would like to challenge everyone as you're looking through this. And a follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. it's really easy. You're a disciple if you're following Jesus. John had disciples, and they were following John, and then yes. he started pointing them to Jesus. Mm. He so, said, look. And then Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. That's right. So Paul was not saying, follow me instead of Christ. He's no. fo follow me as I go for Christ, as no. I go towards Christ. So we are real disciples if we are following after the heart of Jesus. That's right. And uh, if we are following after the heart of Jesus, the fruit of our life will prove that. It will. There will be real transformation that takes place. Yes, there will. There will be. Mm -hmm. I also feel like if there's, like, as leaders, when we feel pressure, business owner, right, when you feel that pressure, I think that's why the analogies of, you know, why would you build your business on something without asking if this is my will? That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And then the war analogy for me, I feel like he's going like, you know, what are you, how are you, you can't accomplish and you can't fight that without mm -hmm. seeking me first. I'm here to help you. Yeah. Ephesians 6, you're not battling just between flesh and blood. This There's a spiritual realm in everything in every day of our life. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And to be a disciple, that comes with it. There mm -hmm. is a cost to serving Jesus. Oh, yes. And there's a cost when you go, well, well I'm going to die daily. Okay. Good luck. I'm mm -hmm. I'm stinking exhausted dying already. <laughs> yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I remember I came back in December, right? And I said, my life changed December 15th, 2023. Wrote it down. Mm -hmm. It did. Yes, it December did. 15th. There was a message that the Lord had for me. He had another message for you the next day, December 16th, mm -hmm. 2023. You know what I'm talking about? Yep, I do. Something hit inside of your soul mm -hmm. that is unexplainable. It mm -hmm. just... It, yeah. I can't ever go back. No. Almost for me, dramatically, to go back would be to accept hell on earth. I'm not saying hell. Like, I'm not saying my I soul I know what you mean, though. Yeah. Because I've now seen the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I've seen a new... a new. Once you experience new him and once you experience that, uh, you are never the same because you can't unexperience it. No. Once you meet Jesus... Nothing else will satisfy you. That's not just a cliche song no, or a statement not. that preachers make from the pulpit. <laughs> There's truth in that statement. <sighs> Once you meet Jesus, you can't be the same. It's impossible to be the same. He <sighs> imprints your life. And uh, we, we read it last night in the Gospel of John. It's abiding in him. It is. When you abide in him, you realize that he's the life source. And you you can't find that source in any other thing. You can try other things, oh, for but sure. But they will never satisfy like no, he satisfies. They will you can not. try drugs all day long, and it will feel good. the The feels that come from using, yes, it's mm -hmm. really great at first, for sure. And you can look to those things, but they will not satisfy long term. <laughs> no. You can look to porn. You can all look to it. sex. You can look Food? to alcohol. You Food? can look to parlor donuts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we could look to all the external <laughs> things that feed the flesh, but yeah. the spirit is satisfied by one thing and one thing only, and that is Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when you find him, you want more and more and more. Yeah. He satisfies. He does. He satisfies. There is a cost. There's a There's cost. A cost. Yeah. I'm not gonna preach the I'm not gonna preach any other gospel than the true gospel anymore. Amen. I'm not gonna talk about a gospel that presents um, affirmation to make people feel better. Mm, yeah. I refuse to speak in a place that is untrue. Yeah, I'm glad you're saying that. And I will speak about the Jesus who died, the yes. Jesus of Nazareth, the mm -hmm. Jesus when I meet him one day will have holes in his feet and his hands, the Jesus who literally raised from the dead and now sits on the right hand of the Father, not because he wants to, but because that was the will and the purpose of what God ordained. Mm. The Jesus who I believe would have rather stayed with his people, who he loved, but knew if I don't return and do the next part of what the Father has told me, the helper will not be able to come down and my glory will not dwell inside of you and my gospel of the good news of what I've done for every single person on this earth will not be proclaimed. He will finish his mission. It will be accomplished. Mm -hmm. And what's so beautiful about us living on this planet is you are the number one variable of the story. We are the number one made in the image of God. Yeah, we are. We are so insulting to Lucifer. That's why we battle in this realm to uh -huh. this day. He can't stand it. He hates us. True, can't yeah, true stand jealousy. it. That your immorality, what you are, our sickness, our flaws, our flesh, still the Lord says is good to the point where he rested. Wow. 
That's the goodness of God. Wow. The mm. goodness of God is in Genesis 2, when the Lord loved Adam so much. No matter how you feel about it, if it's just a story or whatever, but the goodness of God is, is looks at Adam and goes, you know what? You're not supposed to be alone. And I told Ron this. That's the first time I ever caught it this year. But Adam um, is, sees Eve, and he says, at last. Meaning for him to say at last means how long was he alone? Cue the music. Yeah. At last. Yes. <laughs> he sees her yeah. and goes, oh my gosh, <laughs> at last. Yeah. Uh-huh. I will. And he says this most beautiful narrative in this in mm-hmm. Genesis 2 and then goes, you will be called woman. Mm-hmm. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Yeah. yeah. You understand the beautiful narrative of that's what Jesus thinks of you. That's yes. the similarity as I'm reading that. I not only think of it as my wife, my partner. But now that's what the Lord thinks of me as a bride. Yeah. As his bride at last. There you are, Justin. When I met Jesus this year, that he transformed my life, when I finalized that in December 15th of 2023, it was my wedding day of mm. coming bare, just completely un- wow. unreserved. Nothing left. Wow. Here's your bride, <laughs> my first love. Uh-huh. I'll meet you at the altar mm-hmm. and I will die every day of my life to submit to you. Mm. And the cost that you're saying in Luke 14 is nothing compared to the glory and honor of who you are. The sufferings of this present it, world cannot be compared to the glory. The glory. Which mm-hmm. shall be revealed. It will be revealed. Yeah. I've seen a glimpse. Uh-huh. And you'll never be the same. Can't. Mm. In order to be different would now be counterculture in the wrong way. Yeah. It would, it would be defiance. Mm. Rebellion. It's completely. Mm. Because I've been gifted. I've been gifted with the presence of the Lord. Man. That's all. I mean, and if you're somebody out there who's the in-between, you know, and you're like, well, I don't know if I've experienced the Lord like that. Um, you will. Mm-hmm. You will. You will. Be part mm-hmm. of one of the hub groups. You will. Yeah. Yep. I believe it with all my heart this year. We will see the yeah. manifestation of the glory of God in people's homes, businesses, churches, mm-hmm. in rooms, that you wouldn't, in podcast episodes, I believe that the glory of the Lord will come into your workout, that you'll be so touched I that you'll have that. to pause lifting that 50 pound dumbbell, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm jacked. <laughs> I have to pause it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. I'm back in the gym today, mm-hmm. but you can tell I'm a different cat this year. So get ready yeah. to just, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be unreserved. Some things I might say might be not theologically correct. If you mm-hmm. hear something, email me, man. I'm on a journey to learn. But I, I'll tell you this. That. There's one There's one truth. His name's Jesus. Yes, he is. There's one purpose. It's to do the will of him and the will of the Father. I was designed for a, a reason, mm. and I'm going after that whole, wholeheartedly, and it will cost me something, and I'm okay with it. Always. Okay with it. Always. Last year was transformation. Yep. This year's to send and to go. Mm-hmm. It's the year of adventure for me. I love that. You know what adventure means? Unknown territory. I don't know where I'm going fully. Oh, man. There's something beautiful in that, though. It's so... I can't wait. (laughs) I'll put my seatbelt on and roll. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go through every door he opens. (laughs) I'm committed to it. We're committed to it. We're committed to walking, running through every door he opens. And if he doesn't open it, we won't go through it. No. But the moment he opens it, he doesn't have to ask me twice. He doesn't. Oh, no, 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 no. Committed to going forward mm. in Jesus. Committed to keeping my eyes on him. I love, it's why Hebrews 12 and 2 is so powerful yes. to my own spirit right you now. It's my theme times. scripture right That's now. Right. I know I said it for my church, but it's also my theme scripture. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm looking to him. And when he moves, I'm moving with him. When he <laughs> says, I'm saying with him, whatever he's doing, I want to be a part of what Jesus is doing. I'm the little kid in the classroom yes, saying, oh, children. pick me, pick me, pick me. Pick yes, me. pick me, oh, God. Man. I want to go. I want to do. I want to see what you're doing in the earth because I know it's powerful. It's, he's shifting the world. He is shifting it. Get ready for pivots this year. Those of you watching this podcast, get ready for 2024 for divine interruptions. God is going to shift things. He's going to pivot things. You've got the idea for how things are going to go, but the Holy Spirit says, watch watch me look at what I'm doing because I'm going to pivot 
Mm. And it's gonna be unexpected and it's gonna make you uncomfortable. We have to get to get used to being uncomfortable this year. Without we have doubt. to. If we're gonna follow Jesus, we have to be used to we have to get used to being uncomfortable and be okay with it. Mm. And we are leaving the status quo places in God and going to the unknown territories, the wilderness, the adventures, and embracing all that he wants to do because he will use our lives if we say yes. Oh, he will. Mm -hmm. He's going to. But you have the choice. He will not force his plan. That is it. He is inviting us to say yes to his plan. And you can stay the same all you want to. You can stay in the same place, do the same thing, and expect different results all day long. And Einstein called you insane. 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 That is legit. But Jesus is saying, if you'll follow me, yeah. I will make you fill in the blank. Oh, That's yes. what he said to the disciples when he first saw them. Yes, he Follow did. me and I will make you. I will make you. He did say we that. We get caught up on Ooh. the very next passage right there, but he yes. said, I will make you. I will make if you. If you are looking to do something for the Lord, you have to follow him. Have to. Or you won't be made. Wow. Yeah, and um, to that, when you say follow, follow him, don't, com don't put conditions on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we love to control. We love to control. You're not in charge. Yeah. No. Submit to the glory of God. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the chosen to fix that, right? He, I it do too. gives you tensions of man. Mm. Peter had tension. Don't you know, I love how they do that. I do too. Matthew had tensions. Yeah. They all had tensions. Yeah. Matthew wanted to figure it out first. Oh, dude. Yeah. Well, this doesn't calculate. Yeah, this, this doesn't, doesn't calculate. Work. Logical yeah. thinkers. Benny's Cannot kind, compute. <laughs> Benny's very logical. He thinks, mm. and I've seen a release yeah. in his lo logistical mind, which is brilliant, and has made him successful. Yeah. Right? Not mm -hmm. saying all the things that he's touched just work, but logic and faith won't coexist in the next season of your life, Ben. No, it won't. No, they won't. And um, I think I have tried logic for such a long time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so has the journey been about the Lord leading you and inviting you into releasing, having to have the logic behind it? Mm, I think that, yeah, I think because. Uh, obviously I grew up in the church uh, mm -hmm. with my parents being praise and worship leaders. And so, um, as I became older and older, having a logical mind, I think I, you know, always said like, I don't want to be in ministry. All of those thought, all of the thought process came from logic of multiple different things of, um, you know, being, feeling like you're in a bubble or like just different things that were like real and they were logic, logic things like in my brain. And, uh, I think as I started to progress like through just my journey of life and trying to use logic in like every part of my life, whether it be like running the numbers. I think I used to always tell this to jail. I was like, we'll run the numbers because the numbers never fail. Like the numbers never lie. They don't lie. And so um, I think that's like the way I was constantly living until I was just like, um, I have done this my way with mm. trying to use logic over and over again. And um, to me, I feel like it has not worked out. There's been some success in it, but to me, it's like not the way I thought logic was supposed to sure. go. You know what I mean? And uh, so I, I think this year, really, it was like the tail end of last year. I remember I was telling Jay, I was like, everybody's starting their New Year's resolution. I've already started. Like, you know what I mean? Like this, the year is basically new for me now. And uh, that yes. was, yeah. Yeah, right then it was like the year is new for me now, you know, and uh, that was the night that, that morning was the comes night. when we wake up. Yeah, and you just talked about that. Yes, yeah. he had a yeah. interaction with the Lord. Lord woke him up. Yeah, well, I preached probably his ear off one night. I came in similarly. <laughs> yeah. I was going through my stuff, right? Right. And I was like, I gotta die. Ben was, ben was like, Oh man, and I was just like, No, it's all it's death, bro. Mm -hmm. I've got to die. Yeah. And <laughs> mm -hmm. I was just passionate, wasn't I, that night? It was just the yeah. Lord. And um, you said you went to bed that night. Lord woke you up at like 3 a.m. Yeah, so I, I, um, I'd never watched The Chosen before. And I remember Isaac, which is a good friend of ours, he had came into town, and he's a big Chosen advocate, which yes, I think is, is amazing. <laughs> and now yeah. I am a ginormous <laughs> Chosen advocate. Um, but, you know, and it, he has the... Um, the login and everything, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to put, after having the, the talk with Jay, I'm like, I'm going to put on the chosen 
and I had tried to put it on before, but like, I was just like, uh, didn't really watch it. So I put it on and I quickly just like fell asleep and, um, God woke me up at 3 a.m. And it was, I, it was like episode three or something like that. And I began to watch The Chosen. So it had basically episode three, I think, or episode two is where he started actually uh, performing the miracles. Like he goes to Peter and he makes the fish, you know. Yeah. And um, what I was starting to see is the faces of the disciples in real time realizing who Jesus is. <laughs> The revelation. The revelation. And the revelation happened for me at the same time. As they are realizing who is in front of them, I am realizing who is in front of me and who he is. And realizing I have to be a disciple. Like that is what I have to be. I have to be like Peter. I have to be like how they thought they knew. You know what I mean? And now they are, they're awake. They're awake now. Awake. And the, the rest doesn't matter. <laughs> my fishing doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. My this doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever my this is. Whatever my this is yeah. does not matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Follow me and I will make you. It's That's the it. greatest. It's mm -hmm. the greatest revelation <laughs> of your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that there's not practicals, but he will provide. Yeah. He'll protect. Yeah. He is counselor. Mm -hmm. He is friend. Yeah. And I was so proud of you when you experienced that because I've seen a change. Oh, yeah. You do change when you meet the real Jesus. Yes, you do. You do. And there's a cost to that relationally. There's a cost to that, you know, saying goodbye to certain things. But, yeah, I want you to speak on, speak on the cost because I think that... Um, and it goes with conditions because I, I know a lot of people out there that are not, be they believe in Jesus or whatever it is, um, but they're doing their own way in life. And a lot of them say, well, if he loves me, why is his condition, why is his love conditional? And um, whenever I was listening to that, it, it made me think about why is, why are we conditional? <laughs> so it's like you're saying, why, why is his love conditional? But you are wanting to do whatever you want to do <laughs> so you're putting the condition bro and call it jesus and you're calling yeah and blame him and blame him but at the end of the day you're saying i want to be a follower i want to do this and this but i also want to do this and i want to do that and i want to do this and i want to do that who's putting the conditions on it i've never yeah. looked at that from that side absolutely before. my goodness mm -hmm. and he's just sitting at the door he's sitting at the couch just like i'm, I'm just here right you're I'll blaming be with me. you. Yeah, I'll be with you through whatever it is you're gonna go and My do. conditions are simple. Right. Love everybody. Yeah. Follow me. Follow me. Seek me before you go and start your own church or your own ministry or your own business. Yeah. Before yeah. you go to war and try to take people down and gossip about them and say, Well, they hurt me. Mm. How about you come to me? Man. Right. Let the provider, let the protector come in and console your heart. Mm -hmm. That's why this verse is so powerful to me. Mm -hmm. The cost of the disciple is not that much. Yet it's everything. Yeah, it's everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know it's it's, it's so everything. <laughs> but man, you see the smile on my face. It's everything. Take everything. Yeah. I don't want anything anymore. Give me Jesus. Yesterday I was at at parlor and I was just I felt the Lord just explain so much to me over the seven days and it was a lot. I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah. And I found clarity. And then I walk in today this morning, and you know confirmation. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm just how can you not just go? Oh, you got it. You got it because I no longer giving my whole. Well, if you do this, Lord, and then I'll do that. It's the transaction yeah, it's not in a my chess life. Chess game gone. The transaction is gone. I'm uh -huh. not playing games with Jesus no more. Yeah. Um, but I was I was um, sweeping in parlor. We had some issues. We're trying to do some stuff, and I wasn't gonna be there all day. I wanted to be with my kids, and so I just had this tension. Like, man, I want to be gone at two. I'm the boss, though, you know. And so that comes with, yes. you know, the sacrifice. I'm not a boss. I'm a leader. That's why I stayed. Sorry, just gonna point that out real quick. Bosses would have left. It's a I'm good not a boss. Out. I'm a leader. Yeah, I had stuff right. that needed to get done. Not coming in against anybody, but that's okay. You challenge to all say that. challenge uh -huh. all business owners. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> And pastors and everybody else. We're leaders, not bosses. 
But um, I just was in there and started mopping. And that song that just came to my heart from Pastor Ben when we were at Jesus Image yeah. gave us a story of how that, that good old hymn was created. I can't get that out of my mind. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have mm-hmm. decided. And as I was just legit, and people probably think, you're crazy. Parlor for me is following Jesus. It's not a paycheck. It's not to be cool. It's not to look cool on Facebook. There's so much a bigger story, and I'll tell people one day about what that is. But as I was mopping, I just started singing, and I sang it for 30 minutes. <laughs> I have decided <laughs> to follow Jesus. Yeah. I have mm-hmm. decided. And I love that part when you're like, no turning back. No turning back. Mm. No turning back. And then I, as I was mopping, then I just said, the cross before me, mm-hmm. which is that die daily. I got a cross in my hand. <laughs> I will, I gladly, back in the day, I would pick up my cross out of fear. Mm. Now I wake up every day looking for it. Mm. I wake up every day. Yeah. Looking for my cross. Mm. And uh, every time I pick up my cross, the less I see of this world. And that's a paradox, and it doesn't make any logical sense. (laughs) That's how it works with him. (laughs) That's just what it is. And the beauty of this year is the Lord is getting his people's attention early because I do think it's going to be one of the most Mm -hmm. revolutionary years that we've seen in the Western world in a long time. I love the verse of that song. It says, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Mm. So for anybody who last year, this year, now, whenever, the Lord can meet you where you are. Yeah. Don't turn back. Let it go. Fight for the cost of being a disciple. You are a bride of the everlasting God who will be here for all time, and he has given you an opportunity to join him on that. Yeah. Don't stress about the finances. Don't stress about the status quo, the titles, right? Mm. The perceptions of man. Mm. Let it die. The pleasing of man, let it die. And go after the one. The one. Amen. Our first love. He is. Um, So, incredible podcast today. Yeah. I'll share real quick. Um, Check out the app. We're going to start... Young Adults, yes. My Daily Bread Global, Wednesday nice. nights. It's going to be every Wednesday night. Um, we'll get the date. I'll get with Ron when we're going to do that. We're working on time to make sure um, it helps our young adults here mm. in, um, yeah, in you well know, the East globally. Coast of Florida. But we're global. So we don't just make decisions based off of where we're at you know, geographically. We mm-hmm. are know that the Lord has called us to the global world. And so I'm just seeking with his counsel, we'll come up with the right time that matches all the people that I believe the Lord wants to reach out to. And um, it will be um, for young adults. And so some of you are going to be like, oh man, Justin, are you going to put an age limit on it? Yeah. I just ask that you honor that. Yeah, <laughs> yes, really we, are. we are. I ask that you honor that. Um, and so the, the cap will be 30 years old. Um, there are some young people, some youth that might be uh, mature enough to navigate through the conversations that will be had. Um, if you do have a child who is an, you know, a very mature 16-year-old or something like that, um, me and Ron will de- determine how we kind of go about creating the safe. Um, we'll basically need a parent's permission. Absolutely. Because yeah. they'll, right now they'll have eight. to be a yeah. social media yeah. age, yep. appropriate mm-hmm. age. Yep. Yeah. Um, right now it's young adults is 18 to 30 for our ministry at the moment. The Lord can correct us and direct us, and we're going to give him. Again, this is wildfire. That's this right. is a controlled burn, and so this will be a little messy. But um, And then our topic will be on Jesus, but Jesus is what? And so we're going to dive into who Jesus is the rest of this year. Millennials, Gen Z, we don't know Jesus. No. We don't know him. Mm-hmm. It, and it's, they just know the church. We're going to find Jesus. And so <laughs> if you're looking for Jesus, you're looking for conversations about Jesus, the transformational power of the Son of God, the King of the world. Um, We're going to talk about him. So some months we'll talk about Jesus as Savior. Next month, maybe Jesus as friend, Jesus as baptizer. I think February, we're going to talk about Jesus as lover. I love that. Jesus Mm. as lover, not Jesus loving. He does love, but he's lover. He's our lover. He's Mm. a lover. Uh We're going to dive into what does that mean? We'll bring in some identity issues, some sexual issues, some some of that stuff. This is a safe place, but we're going to go at it. I will not shy away from anything. I have a very offensive strategy 
of how I teach. And so I'm forewarning people, discussions will be open. I'm not going to, uh, and I'm not going to crash people's theology. So Amen. if you feel like you're going to come on here to teach, you know, theological correct things to young adults mm-hmm. who are just discovering Jesus, um, I just ask you to do that in a loving way. I want more voices. Absolutely. But this is an open dialogue for people to discover and to start their journey with the Lord. And I'm going to make sure to protect that because that's what the Lord wants to have happen. Yes. So we're excited. Wednesday night, probably looking around 8, 8.30 or 9, depending on what that looks like. And um, we'll have some hub East. meetings down the road too. Yeah. Uh, but we'll t- oh, I need your ki- guidance yeah, with that. We'll, we'll get all that figured out. Yep. The, by the time you watch this podcast, that will actually already be figured out. So you'll be hearing more about that. Another great thing that's going to be happening this year is uh, My Daily Bread, the very first My Daily Bread Prayer and Worship Conference. I've been waiting coming for you this to say year. that. And uh, we I'm just work waiting out. to get the details finished so we can <laughs> announce it. Uh, but we're going to gather together in person. Uh, oh, man. Uh, in, uh, first conference. Like two or three days. Ooh. We're going to be our first one. And, oh, my. Uh, eyes not seen, ears not heard, the things that God is going to do through this ministry in the coming days, weeks, and months. So I'm excited about it. Yes. I want to say this, and I want I don't want Ron to be the only one that talks about this, but financially, if you ever feel like the Lord is calling you to partner with us, um, I'll be the first to tell you um, this year, I want us to be more open with what we want to do. And um, I've been one to struggle, me and you both have been one to struggle with the ask, but me and Ben felt Same about here. two years ago the Lord would call us to to have a voice mm-hmm. financially. We've seen um, a lot of things in the church. We've seen a lot of things in nonprofits. We've seen the need that's there and and the right way to shepherd that. And so this year, I want to be a vocal point that this ministry has blessed me. Um, I personally, me and my wife, have partnered um, to. Um, join in on a pledge every single month. And I've done that for a year and want to continue. I, bl- I, I pray that as the Lord blesses my businesses and my wife's businesses and our, our family, that that money will go even more. Um, I believe in what my daily bread is doing. You're probably like, man, but aren't you on the podcast? Yeah, I do this out of my heart. I do this Same. for the ministry. Mm-hmm. I don't do this because Ron has contracted me to share my voice. I share my voice and it's an honor and, and, and to glorify the Lord in Amen. the name of Jesus. And so we want to get to Africa. I'll just be blunt to tell you, I want to get to Africa with Ron. Um, I want us on a plane ride to go see what the Lord is doing in Africa with Bishop, who's on our call. Um, we need to pay for the conference. Um, we have equipment that we use with other companies like um, and churches, thanks to Lift Church. Yes. I want to just shout out to them. Thank you guys so much for blessing so us grateful. episode after episode. But I believe that we need to have our own equipment. We need to be mobile. I, I want Ron to get on airplanes and be in Louisville for stuff. And so, um, yeah, if you do mm. feel like the Lord would ever call you um, to make um, a one-time donation or to pledge with us monthly, I want to give you that opportunity. You can give on our app. You can give on our website. And uh, you've never heard me ask for money. I don't think I've ever even done an offering outside of the church. And so um, yeah. I will tell you, Amazing. it would be a blessing to just see the Lord continue to do what he's doing. I want to have food at our hub nights. I would love one day at my daily bread, instead of people bringing in food, we bless the people who come and feed them. Amen. I want to go to that level. Yeah. I want Amen. to take the offering that the Lord gives us and gives it back to his people. Yep. That's my vision on behalf of one young adults. One time when we do a hub um, that uh, we we feed everybody, dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, let's uh, do it. That'd be cool. Adult Lunchables. Yeah. 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 AKA charcuterie. Yeah, charcuterie <laughs> board. That'd be amazing. A little more protein than we usually yeah, have. Absolutely. Though, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, that's just me saying out of my heart, as you can see, I'm raw and real. I didn't prepare for this at all. But um, thank you to those who have been faithful to give. And uh, I will tell you, My Daily Bread does pledge to give to nonprofits every single month. We'll continue to do that. And uh, missions is really our goal. Amen. So I think yes. uh, under Ron's leadership, I think the Lord will continue to bless us because we maintain to be a blessing. So, Amen. Yep. Awesome. That's a wrap. We love you guys.